Aloha and welcome to Upside Down Pilates. My name is Lisa Oreg and with me today is Herman, my trusty assistant. We are going to start looking at our sacroiliac joint and pain that can be created through misalignments in our sacroiliac joint. Issues um, that can be created in our sciatic nerve because of our sacroiliac joint and also because of our piriformis and how our piriformis plays into what is going on at our sacroiliac joint. So let's start with the bones of the sacroiliac joint. There's two main bones. These two big bones here, these are your ilium, all right? They're the sides of your hip bones. And then right here is your sacrum. So the sacroiliac joint is where the sacrum and the ilium articulate, right in here. It is an S-shaped joint and it slides. So the arthrokinematics are pretty much a slide. There's not a significant amount of movement in the joint. It's more of just a little bit of give so that we don't break in the middle of our body, all right? I'm gonna show you from the back here as well. It's a pretty deep joint. And again, back here, this is our, sac our ilium, and this is our sacrum, and the joint is right in between there. There's about 0.02 to 0.08 degrees of movement, and the movement uh, is called nutation and counter nutation. So, when our sacrum, if you can see here, is all nice and snuggly like this, that is a nutated pelvis, and this is where we don't have a significant amount of joint pain. When our sacrum and our ilium are not snuggly like this, but a little more open like that, um, that is called counter nutation. Um, and this is where we start to have pain in our lower back in that area. And it starts to tug on other parts in our hip that can create some other pain going on in our hip. If you notice here, one can be in the good spot and another can be in a bad spot. So um, you may only have pain on one side and one side will be a little bit more loose than the other side. We should have a number of tendon, excuse me, a number of ligaments that crisscross this area in our joint in the front and then also around in the back. There should be a significant number of ligaments holding this together. So it's just a little bit of give that we have. As we um, dance through dance training or if we sit improperly a long period of time or just make movements that put a lot of pressure on our lower back at our sacrum area, those ligaments become a little bit more loosey-goosey. Um, they can also be naturally loosey-goosey just because of the way that your body is built um, or you may have some sort of collagen disorder where you have um, an immune response or an autoimmune response actually attacking these different tissues, creating a little bit more what's called ligamentous laxity in this area. And so that will predispose you to having sacroiliac joint pain or discomfort or problems. The muscles now that help to stabilize our um, sacrum and our ilium and to bring us into a nutated position are going to be our hamstrings and our abdominals. So the hamstrings and the abdominals help to stabilize the hips, the ilium, and then the uh, pelvic floor muscles as well as the lumbar multifidy help to navigate the sacrum. And I'm actually going to tape these for you so you can have an even more clear picture of what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a, the linea alba, this is a little tendinous sheath that goes about through here and goes down onto your pubic symphysis. This is where a lot of your abdominal muscles actually attach, so I'm going to use it as an attachment or a guesstimation for the attachment. So some of the muscles that help to stabilize are going to be our...
internal obliques. I'm going to go down here. Our transversus abdominis wraps around from the front, from the back to the front. It also actually connects on to our hip bone to help pull up in front. So it connects here. This is still our transversus abdominis. All right. And our external obliques also help to connect down onto here. I'm going to not tape those. So we're going to be thinking to help stabilize our ilium to pull up in front with our abdominal muscles. To stabilize our ilium from the back is going to be our hamstrings. So our hamstrings, and I'm just going to do a rough tape of this. Our hamstrings connect to our sits bones, and then they attach down around to our knee. And I'm going to wrap it down around here. And there's three of them, and they attach at different places. But the idea is they go from your hamstrings towards to your knee. Okay, and there's three of them. And they pull down and back. So if you have your abdominals pulling up in front and your sacrum pulling down and back, it will help to stabilize the ilium up against our sacrum. Now, the other end of this is going to be our pelvic floor. And that's going to be very challenging for you to be able to see here. But the pelvic floor is at the base of your pelvis down here. So I'm even going to put it at the bottom so you really think about it low. But you have many layers of your pelvic floor that go up through the pelvis. But just think about it like a little hammock that you have down at the bottom of the pelvis. And that hammock actually connects onto your tailbone and your sacrum. I'll tape it from up here. All right, so it's a pretty big muscle. And when it's spread, when the sits bones are spread, it helps to pull it tight. And then we have our multifidy in the back. So our multifidy actually go all the way up and down our spine, and they're short little stabilizing muscles but they help to navigate the sacrum from the back. So I'm just going to do this, and we'll pretend like our sacrum is attaching on to our lower back muscles. All right. So the pelvic floor widens, and then the lumbar multifidy contract to tip the sacrum forward. Okay. So those are the four big sets of muscles that we have to work together in perfect harmony to make sure that our sacroiliac joint stays stable and pain-free. And if any one of those sets of muscles are off, it's very easy for the sacroiliac joint to be destabilized. And like I said, if you have an imbalance from side to side, it's very easy to have one hip shifted differently than the other hip, and then that side will have a little bit of pain in it, or the, opposite, the other side could have pain in it from that one being shifted. It gets a little complicated after a while. No need for that much detail today. So now I want to talk about a couple more muscles that can affect or be affected by this idea of the sacroiliac joint being um, stabilized. The next one is the piriformis. So the piriformis uh, connects from the sacrum and it goes down to the hip. So now we can start to see how what's going on in our sacroiliac joint in our sacrum can start to affect what's going on in our hip or in our butt cheek area is where you feel the pain. So I'm going to pull a big pink out here. So it actually connects up here partially to the inside of our sacrum here. And then it hops down here onto the tip of our greater trochanter. All right, and it helps to turn our hip out. All right, and it's a pretty big muscle once you start to look at it. So if this is tight or overused, 
it can actually start to pull on the sacrum and pull the sacrum out of alignment. So that's where your, or if one of these other muscles are off, it can pull the sacrum and the ilium out of alignment, which will start to tug on the piriformis muscle. In 40% of the population, the sciatic nerve actually runs directly through the piriformis. So it, or it runs under it. So if this piriformis is affected in any way, it can actually smash down on the sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve is a, a collection of nerves that come out through this sciatic notch and go down your leg and give nerve supply to the rest of your leg or start the nerve supply to the rest of the leg. And if it's clamped, it is very painful. I had this issue for 12 years. So mine was because my sacroiliac joint was destabilized. And the second that I figured out how to stabilize my sacroiliac joint and get my lumbar multifidy to fire up, it released all the pain shooting down through the back of my leg. And that was from my wonderful dance training as a child and then dancing all the way up and through college. One more muscle that I want to talk about, if you have enough brain power to absorb it, is our psoas. Now this is a ginormous muscle, and I'm going to do green here. And this muscle goes all the way up here, and goes all the way down here. So I'm just going to do part of it, but it would go all the way up into almost your thoracic spine. And this muscle connects from your spine, and it goes down here doo, 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 to our lesser trochanter. All right, and it helps. What it does is it flexes the hip, or bring the legs, brings the leg to your torso, or it brings the lower back towards your leg. And when this gets contracted it can help to actually pull the lower back forward, which can start to give a bit of pull on the sacrum because they're all eventually connected. And that is another thing that can throw the uh, sacroiliac joint off. So as you can see, it is a very complicated issue <laughs> because any of these muscles can be either overly strong or overly stretched, or one is working more than the other, um, and it will throw that joint off, and then you'll start to feel pain either in your lower back, and you can touch it. Oftentimes, it'll be right where that little knob is, right to the inside of it. It will be quite painful, um, but that being off can throw off into leg pain all the way down your leg that's pretty much the anatomy of what's going on. Now the question, the big question is, what do we do to get rid of the pain? I wish I had a very easy answer for you. The problem is that each person is very individual and each person, there's always a little trick that you have to figure out to get the sacrum and the ilium to come back into place. But what I am gonna show you is a basic beginning a uh, series of movements that you can do to help to stabilize our lower back. And that's what we're gonna go into now. So get ready. Upside Down Pilates Unlimited. Get Upside Down Pilates uninterrupted with no commercials or ads. For a limited time, we are offering a special early bird discount at less than 17 cents a day. And you can lock in your rate forever. We'll keep adding new lessons. At Upside Down Pilates Unlimited, you can watch all the full one-hour episodes of Upside Down Pilates on all your devices. Roku, Apple TV, Android, select smart TVs, iOS, Amazon Fire Stick, the web, and more. Anywhere the Vimeo app is supported. The next best thing to taking lessons with me. Plus, this is a great way to help support the channel and help keep us making great content. Upside Down Pilates Unlimited, everywhere, anytime, Commercial free, affordable. Visit www.upsidedownpilates.com to sign up now.